Hi there, how's it going? Today we're going to solve a problem um, on the medium level difficulty. This will be question number five out of the 75 I recommend you to do. Um, I'm going to show you a new method of breaking down a problem into more smaller bite-sized pieces so you can analyze things and make sure that you don't forget about it. Um, so stay tuned and uh, we're going to look at the questions right now. Okay, so let's begin. Question number 238 product of an array except for self. This question is considered to be medium, so let's have fun. Let's take a read of the question. Given an integer array, and let's call it nums, return an array and call it answer, such that answer at the ith position is equal to the product of all the elements of nums, except for nums at i. The product of any of the prefix or suffix of nums is guaranteed to fit a 32-bit integer. You must write an algorithm that runs O of n time and without using a division operator. So let's translate this. What does this really mean? You're going to be given an array of integers or numbers, say 1, 2, 3, as an example. Um, and you're supposed to return back to the user um, an array of same size such that at each position, it's essentially the product of the variables that are uh, not part of that ith position. So what does that really mean? So let's use an example. Say you have an array size like, uh, and, the, and the values inside were like one, two, three, right? Your return, um, your actual return would be, um, say at position zero, it's just basically the product of two times three. If you're at position one, it's one times three. And your position at three will be one times two. Get it? So let's look at some examples. So in our first example, we look at one, two, three, four. And the output array is 24, which is effectively two times three times four, 12, which is one times three times four, eight, which is one times two times four, and six, which is one times two times three. So that's what they expect. Um, let's look at the second example. It's the same thing. Um, at negative one, one, zero, three, negative three, and three, your output array would be effectively zero because anything multiplied in this bucket, it's gonna be zero because you have a zero there. Anything in here, looking at it, for example, it's gonna be negative one, and multiply by these things. But anything multiplied by zero is effectively going to be zero. So you'll know that once you get into the middle, right, um, that's just negative one times one times negative three and three. Okay, so let's let's talk about how we're going to try to solve this problem. All right, so I'm going to try to introduce you guys to a new thing uh, for more medium type of problems that you should probably start getting a habit of constructing. Um, this is what I usually called um, like IOC. So what does that really mean? Let's, let me just explain. So IOC effectively is going to be identifying what is your input? What is your output? And what is your conditions? So in this question, our input is fairly simple. In this JS docs here, it's just, you know, an array of numbers. So let's just say that array of numbers and it's called nums. All right. Our output is supposed to be a array of numbers, right? So in this output, we're supposed to get something that is uh, basically product of all elements except for itself, right? And the C is basically what kind of conditions do we have? Well, let's take a look. Our conditions that we have right now is that, well, um, you must make the algorithm O of n time. So we know it has to go O of n time. And then the second condition is um, you cannot use division operator. All right, cannot use division. So let's try to understand why they put these um, restrictions on us first before we start trying to dive into the problem. So let's look at that example that we had earlier. Nums equals to this, okay? So if you wanted to return a like a brute force way, let's just talk about, okay, why would they say you cannot use division? Well, that's fairly simple, right? Because all you have to do is find, if you're gonna use division, um, the whole idea of, you know, when you multiply things together, like for example, A times B times C, 
Uh, and if you divide it by, say, B, you're always just going to get A times C, right? So that's why they don't want you to use division, because otherwise you just find the product of all this, which is 1 times 2 times 3 times 4, and then you just divide it by each of these numbers individually to get your um, actual end results. They don't want you to do that, so let's think of another more um, creative way. So let's think about, okay, well, that's that condition. That's interesting. Uh, what about, why do they have an O of N condition? Now let's think of another brute force way. So let's say solution, right? It's going to be the same size. I'll just start with like one, one, oops, one, oops, one, 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 one. Okay. So how would you do this in a brute force way? So in this case, um, I would just go and say, all right, I'm going to iterate through this array, right? To check at what position I am. So I'm going to position at zero. And I'm just going to go and get the sum of, like, basically the product of these three numbers together. I'm just going to make it so it's easy to see. Oops. Uh, product of these numbers, effectively, is going to be 2 times blah, blah, blah. So you can think about this as 24, right? Um, but I'm just putting it here so it's easy to explain. Okay, cool. 2, 3, 4, 3, and 4. So what... What do I need to do in here? So what I, I basically, if I go and iterate to my sex part, second part, I'm going to have to look at this array and say, okay, well, let's take a look at this times, oh, I'm at the same spot of position one. Let's skip it. So it's going to be one times three times four times four. And then you get your one times three times four. And then on this one, it's effectively the same thing. One times two, skip three, go to four, and so on and so forth. But if I do it this way, have you noticed that I'm going to have to basically rescan this over and over again as I approach every single element in this result solutions array, right? So that is actually going to cause like a potential O of n squared time and time complexity. So they don't like that solution. So let's try to think about what other ways we can do this. Okay, so we know these two restrictions, which is you have to do an O of n time. You can't use division. How can you get information such that, you know, when you pass through it once, um, you can actually solve the problem. Now, if you think about it, I always try to go to a couple of fundamental things. We know our inputs, we know our outputs. So we make sure that we include those things, right? In our question here, which is, all right, I'm going to have, make sure I'm going to have a solutions array, right? Solution array, solution array, and I need to make sure to return it, return my solution. Okay. We know that at the very minimum, that's what we have to do. Great. Now, what can we do when we're forced and restricted to pass through this once? So you know how in software, we only have basically two things that we can use. We can use data structures or a particular specific algorithm, right? So maybe we can actually start using a data structure or some sort of way to store information about uh, our experience as we iterate through this array, right? So, but what kind of things can we, what kind of things will we want to store? So let's let's think about it. What is the what is a product? Product is basically something like a times b times c times d, uh, c times d. Like these can be anything. And I'm just assuming these are like the one, two, three, four. Okay. Effectively, that is your a b a b a b c d. Right. So that's a product. Right. Effectively. So how do I know, for example, if I'm at b, how do I get a times c dot and times d? So let's think about it. We can't use division because if we just, you know, get the sum of everything and divide it by B, of course you can get it, but we can't do that, right? So what can we can recognize here? Have you noticed that, oh, if I simply, you know, to find out what the what this valuable can be, all I need to look at is what's towards my left and what's towards my right, right? Because once we multiply anything towards our left, with the things towards our right, we can definitely get the answer of B. So if you think about it, maybe we should construct an array such that at every position we look at, it just tells us, all right, what is the value of everything, the product of everything to the left of that particular value, right? And then we could construct another array that does the same, but for the right side, right? Because if you have two arrays, assuming that you have like say a left, left, product of size, like say one, 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 or let's keep it empty for now. 
and you have a product, a right, I'll call it a right product. Or equal to one, two, three, four. Okay. Right. So what do we do here? So if I save that example of A, B, right? Um, I effectively just need to know, okay, let's make a, let's construct our left product line. So what does that mean? So if I look at one, right, what's to, what's on the left of one, it's pretty much nothing, right? So we could probably just say, okay, our left side, we're gonna start with one because one multiplied by nothing is, you know, one by itself be the one that's fine. Now let's go to the next thing. What's towards my left? Well, it's basically everything that we've found multiplied by the previous number. So that's just one. Let's look at number three. So what do we do here? All right, well, what's on my left side? It's basically, you know, everything that's part of my left product multiplied by that, or everything over here multiplied by that. So it's gonna be your one times two. Two in here. And if you look at position four, what does this mean? It's basically saying, okay, well, what's the product of everything here, which is represented in here, uh, multiplied by where my position is minus one which is three. So it's just two times three, which is six. Cool. So we have to do something back on the right side of things, right? Because this is only left product side. So let's take a look on the right side. If you're looking at four, what do you see in here? That should probably be a one, right? Because, you know, four times one is four. That's cool. If you're here, what do you need to do? You look at one times four. Great. That's just going to be a nice four. And you go in here, what is this gonna be? Well, it's gonna be four times three, which right now is 12. And if you go in here, it's basically 12 times two, right? So it's 24. So have you noticed like nice cool pattern? Now we have, we can just simply make our solutions array, solution array equal to our left side times our right side to get what our solution would be. In this case, 24, 12, eight, and six. Cool. All right, seems like we might have a way to solve this problem, right? All we need to do right now is just basically create two places to store stuff and construct our final solution. So let's let's try to pseudo code and code out the solution. All right, cool. Let's go and say function product except for itself, you're given a number, that's great. Let's create, let's let uh, left products equal to a empty array for now, and let right product equal to an empty array, right? And let solution also be an empty array for now. Okay, so remember what we need to do? Populate left product populate right product, populate solution. So it's basically three singular for loops. And like in time complexity wise, if you look at it, it's basically O of N plus O of N plus O of N. Um, and if you pick, that's like three N, so you could drop the three, it's still O of N. So this solution would work. So let's do that. For let i is gonna be equal to zero and i is less than nums dot length and i is plus plus. So what do we need to do first is we need to construct this fun one, right? So we need to check if my left product, left product um, dot length is, is at zero because we need to initialize it, right? Well, I'm just gonna go left product dot push, uh, let's push one in there because we need to do that for our case in here. Else, what do we do? So else I'm gonna have to make sure I take my, so when I'm in this position, I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna take my left product dot push. What am I pushing in there? I'm gonna be pushing in my nums, right? Um, I'm gonna push in my nums. I'm basically number. I'm gonna be pushing in my previous value in here, which is actually left left product at zero position, right? So what does that mean? It's basically i minus one, 
right? So that takes into the consideration of one times uh, times your nums at uh, let's see i minus one i minus one because if you're at your first position you're filled good your second position you're taking this one my multiply by this if you go here you're basically taking this one multiply by this so you're always lagging behind by one cool that's great i've populated it all and that's good now let's populate our right side so four let i equals to zero and by the way you can do this because of scoping right um you could definitely use the same variables in here if you want i could be less than nums um actually you want to start actually the end of the um of the array so nums dot length i'm gonna start there um let's see actually let me see my logic i want to go start that and then I kind of want to think about, I need to go backwards, right? I really need to go backwards and think about it. So in here, I'm going to have to go, oh, made a mistake, minus one. And I is going to be greater than my negative one because it'll just hit the zero. And I is minus minus, which is going to basically tell me to go, hey, go backwards. And we're good to go. So first thing we need to do is if my right product, product, dot length is equal to zero, oops, zero, then I should do something just to instantiate it, which is write product dot push one. Cool. Now, else, what do I need to do? Go down here and say write product. As we, as we construct this backwards, right, we need to basically, instead of push, we're going to Push, put the actual values into the front. So I'm going to go use unshift, unshift, right? And I'm going to take the right product at position zero because everything we looked in here is going to start with like, um, you're going to start with like one position and then it's always going to be the zeroth position because you keep pushing from the from the beginning. So we should always use the right, um, right product at zero. Um, and you multiply that you multiply that by, uh, let's see, you multiply that by nums at i plus one. Okay, so once you do that, let's see, cool, you populate it and you're basically moving on to the final step. So this nums at i plus one, why is that the case? Because as you iterate backwards, you're gonna be like, okay, I'm taking this, I gotta make sure my Zero, 06 is 6 times 4 times whatever. Uh, sorry, 6. Actually, no, that's nums. Uh, it should be at, this one's at 1. When you're here, you're picking a 1 times 4. So you're always lagging be, or, um, 1 ahead of your particular uh, where your eyes at. So that's why you need nums at i plus 1. All right, cool. Let's work on the last part, which is populating the final solution for let i equal to zero i is less than left product dot length i is plus plus okay solution dot push effectively the left product at i position times the right product at the i position as well the i position as well cool all right, so once you have that, you should return your solution and let's see if we solve the problem. Uh, submit. All right, cool, we solved the problem. All right, I hope you guys find this fun, this question a little bit fun. Um, and I wanted to emphasize on a couple key points is that you know it's always a good idea to list out your inputs, your outputs. I know indirectly um, a lot of these coding questions they actually lift listed in here as like as per at param. This is just like some cement or some uh, the ways that you know JS docs or whatever documentation they prefer. Like just saying like oh at the input parameter should be. Uh, called nums, which is this guy, and then explanation of it is like nums and ray. But you know, for layman's term, it's probably good to just jot it down as your input, you're getting numbers of arrays. Your output, product of all itself, and these conditions um, are extremely important, um, and you should probably just like think about why they mentioned these. 
Now there's one point in here that actually I didn't actually talk about too much, um, but I'll leave it with the with the team here to to think about how we're gonna solve this or not solve it, but why did they bring up a point? They said here saying that the product of the prefix and suffix nums is guaranteed to be fit a 32-bit integer. So just think about why why would they say something like this, right? 32-bit integer. Take a look at the home project and trying to you know research on it. I'll give you a little hint. You know, 32-bit. Uh, can result to maximum array size of four gigs at maximum or potentially a lot less, depending on if you're on a Linux system. Uh, but outside of that, I'll let you think about it first. So anyways, uh, without going on to a tangent, I hope you guys enjoy this particular session um, and good luck with your studies and stay tuned for next week's special. Bye.